1976 in Britain I published the first ever story that told the British public and parliament about GCHQ, the massive electronic spying agency at the heart of the Snowden revelations with its American counterpart. I put together traces of this story since I'd been a schoolboy. I'd spotted secret listening stations uh, in parts of the country near to where I grew up. I'd gone into public libraries and looked up lists of where they might be and tried to figure out what they were doing when they weren't doing the kind of things we understood the BBC did. And over the period of time and then after the uh, Watergate investigations in the United States and after the Vietnam War protests, Americans who'd worked on the inside of the system, people 40, more than 40 years before Edward Snowden, didn't like the Vietnam War and started talking about what intelligence was doing. So between public research in Britain and United States whistleblowers driven by the horrors of what their country was doing to Vietnam, I put together that story for Britain, just as America was learning about what NSA had been doing to them. That was 1976, 40 years before now. The British government wasn't terribly pleased about that article. They tapped my phone, they followed me around, they interviewed my sources, but oddly enough, they had to report to the chiefs of security that when I published the story, I hadn't broken British laws because they'd found nobody I'd got British secrets from, and Americans, who told me secret information about Britain that Britain had given to America, were not covered by British official secrecy, just like Mr. Snowden. So it was an exact parallel. They were furious, and they tried to deport two American journalists as revenge. And then, as that became a public row, more whistleblowers came forward. One of them was British. They'd been following him, they'd been following us, and we were arrested put on trial and at one stage I faced 30 years in prison. The British whistleblowers were given the lightest of punishment. No, no actual jail, no fine, just told off because the trial was a humiliation for the British government. Uh, they'd gone too far at the behest of GCHQ and the security bosses. Uh, we'd made ridicule of them. It wasn't that secret really. They'd had Russian spy after Russian spy betraying really serious stuff that they hadn't revealed. So it became the moment that Britain woke up and first learned that this kind of activity went on. On these days when we've been meeting at the Logan Symposium in Berlin, the British government is poised to force through at a hideous speed the most far-reaching bulk surveillance laws, I believe, in the planet. They're not just going to bulk intercept the internet. They're going to get massive databases on everybody and join them together. They're going to not just hack computers where they want, inside and out the country. They will issue warrants to literally automated bulk hack computers to suit their purposes. Any purposes at all that is suitable to British security. So, we talk about what the Chinese do. We talk about what the criminal hackers working for Russian gangs do. And we're just about to build the world's biggest gang of criminal hackers with the blessing of government and judges. It's an absolute outrage. The British government does not care now for the charter that it brought to Europe. It doesn't care for the fundamental rights and freedoms. It only listens to the language of fear and terror and intimidation. And I don't mean the intimidation of the terrorists, or not solely the intimidation of the terrorists. I mean the intimidation of the public, the intimidation of politicians in the face of uh, hysteria about events that are perceived to be out of control and the need to be seen to do something, even if that something is worse than useless, destroying privacy and at the same time undermining security. The most important thing that Germany and Germans could do is to stand against the United Kingdom in international tribunals, to legislate as a class basis to make this illegal. The, the international conventions already say it's unlawful. 
But we are proposing to do and make completely legal and indeed admit what NSA has done to the rest of the world. What we attack and criticize when it's Russians or Chinese or Iranians or criminal gangs from Belarus or Kiev, we're going to do. It isn't a hypothetical thing. The Netherlands was attacked. German satellite companies were attacked. It's in Snowden's paper. Belgium's major telecommunications company was attacked. The virtual private networks, most of them, are attacked by Britain and the NSA jointly. Um, individual people like you, you're probably not you because you're probably quite computer sophisticated, but anybody out there on the streets, typically running an insecure computer that might be attacked by malware and cultivated into a bot army run out of Kiev. It may also be attacked by malware made in Britain, deliberately installed by British companies on their systems and networks using the new orders, pushed out onto your friends' and your neighbors' computers just for the convenience of spying or saber war and making it look like it all happened from next door in Potsdamer Strasse. Yeah. Once this law is passed, buy nothing British. Uh, allow no British communications company or anything which could be bullied by the British government using forces of law anywhere near your communications. Turn back all British software products at the border until Britain repeals this law. Because under the new law, the government could order a director or even just an employee of a company to make it insecure secretly, possibly not even telling their directors, certainly not telling their shareholders and customers. Ship it out to Germany and just have it available, just in case somebody one day, as Edward Snowden said to us a couple of hours ago, they might want for calls to look at that. So, the short answer is, if the British government passes this law, no one should buy anything from computer software, hardware, firmware, applications. If it's been through Britain and they say it's secure, you say back to them, but the government has ordered you under pain of imprisonment never to reveal if they've given you a secret order. So how can we trust you? What are they going to say? It's creating a crazy, insane, broken world for no benefit uh, and harm everywhere it will take. The difference between metadata and data I would make is yeah. pretty simple. <clears throat> in, in data, what that means, I'm looking at your conversation, yeah. listening to it, or looking or reading a transcript. So it gives me a look in depth in what you're doing at that time. Metadata gives me the view of who you're doing with all over, all the time.